We start this half hour with breaking news, yet another indictment of former President Donald Trump, this time for his alleged role in trying to overturn the election results in 2020. Our chief legal correspondent, Katie Barlow, is following the breaking developments. And Katie, uh, this is the third time now that the former president uh, has been indicted on criminal charges. That's right. We just got a federal indictment that was handed down in the D.C. courthouse, downtown Washington, D.C., by the grand jury that's been investigating the former president on his attempts to overturn the 2020 election. It is a four-count indictment based on public reports that turns out to be accurate. We now know what those charges are. It's a single defendant, just Donald J. Trump, and those four counts are conspiracy to defraud the United States. Uh, that's when it takes two or more people to try and injure or threaten or intimidate somebody trying to exercise a civil right. Now, we just got a copy of the indictment. I haven't read through it here, but presumably one of those theories would be trying to interfere with voters, trying to exercise their right to vote and have that vote be counted. The second count conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding this is 1512 under the obstruction statute and this has been used in a number of january 6th criminal cases where the defendants have been charged with obstructing an official proceeding that was happening at the United States Capitol on January 6th, attempting to disrupt the certification of the Electoral College votes that was taking place that day. On the third count of the indictment that is also obstructing or attempting to obstruct an official proceeding similar to what I just explained. And finally, uh, count four, 241, conspiracy against rights. So there are four counts, conspiracy to defraud the United States, two counts on obstruction and a single count on conspiracy against rights. That conspiracy to defraud the United States uh, was one of the charges that was recommended by the House Committee that was investigating January 6th, as was the 1512 count, the obstruction charges that are in the indictment. It's a 45-page PDF. Uh, it was just unsealed at the courthouse in downtown Washington, D.C. We understand uh, a member of Jack Smith's team handed down the indictment, asked that it remain sealed for uh, the time being. It has now been unsealed. Uh, we'll work our way through it, but we also understand that Special Counsel Jack Smith will also be making a statement here shortly uh, from the Department of Justice so we could learn a little bit more from him as well. But this is a 45-page document, uh, so as we work our way through it, it appears to be a good bit of detail as to what the conspiracy is and what's charged, but four counts for the former president related to investigations of his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. All right, Katie, so you mentioned Jack Smith. He was charged with taking part in two special counsel investigations, the one about the Mar-a-Lago documents, now the January 6th. This is the, the, the heavy lifting that the special counsel was charged with by the DOJ, by Merrick Garland here. So what is next for Jack Smith in this process? Well, next he's going to walk through, uh, presumably, at least in a brief statement, what today's indictment means. You'll also recall, as we talked about, he had a superseding indictment in the Mar-a-Lago documents case uh, earlier this week, and he added charges against the former president related to efforts to conceal uh, or uh, hide from the FBI uh, tapes that were showing what was happening at Mar-a-Lago with moving some of the boxes around with the documents that were found at Mar-a-Lago. So that superseding indictment and this also tell you that these investigations are ongoing. Just because an indictment comes down does not mean that the investigation has closed or that they are stopping their work as a, a, the investigator work of special counsel. So special counsel has unsealed this indictment, but will likely continue to investigate both the Mar-a-Lago documents case and this case. And hopefully we'll hear a little bit more from him later this evening. Katie, I know a lot of people are saying that, uh, we've seen this story before. We saw the January 6th committee investigating uh, the January 6th insurrection and what led up to it. How is this different, though, the federal investigation? Because I know with the special counsel had access to high caliber witnesses, including the vice president. Yes, the vice president did appear before the grand jury, we understand, in this case, after fighting it, um, arguing that he should not have to go before the grand jury. How is this different? This is a criminal case. So this triggers a number of different procedures, unlike what happened before the House Select Committee investigating January 6th. That was largely a political body investigating what happened and making recommendations to the Department of Justice. But that did not carry with it the weight of the American justice system. Those were just... Thank you.
uh, recommendations. Here, this is a criminal case that has begun with the typical process of presenting evidence to a grand jury that will then need to find probable cause that a crime was committed. Here, the grand jury clearly found that on these four counts that are now facing President Trump in this particular case. And so we move forward now with all of the protections that President Trump gets afforded as a criminal defendant in our justice system. He's treated just like every other criminal defendant. He'll be afforded a lawyer. He will go through the arraignment process, which we have now seen play out a couple of times. Uh, we saw that happen down at the courthouse in Florida. Something similar will likely happen here as well.